Okay, the topic of today is conflict. What if conflict wasn't a bad thing? What if it was valuable? What if uh, you were not conflict avoidant or were less conflict avoidant and could transform toxic conflict into productive conflict? By the end of this video, you're going to have a framework that you and your team and your organization can use to navigate conflict productively. It's one of my favorite topics. Uh, in fact, anybody that's ever worked with me will laugh when they watch this video because they've heard about this concept ad nauseum. Uh, and the reason why is it's been absolutely transformative for me and almost anybody that uh, internalizes and leverages it. And so let's go down to the whiteboard here. Uh, let's see here, there we go, the magic of technology. It is called the drama triangle. And so I'm going to draw us two triangles, hopefully. There we go, that we can use to illustrate this point of view and talk about this. So here's the concept. The concept is that there are three personas or dramas that we engage in, that we fall into. Um, and our goal is to be aware of these three dynamics and when we're playing one of the three and to actively choose to shift to a more productive version of it. And so let's go through this now. The first of these dramas is called the persecutor. Now, the persecutor is uh, someone who is critical. They lash out with blame. They are argumentative. They must get their way. They're very forceful. They use guilt or control. Essentially, they are a bully. Now, who are they persecuting? They are persecuting this second role, which is maybe the most key role here, and it's called the victim. The victim is somebody who is at large helpless. They are resigned, they feel powerless or hopeless. Um, they are inactive, they refuse to make decisions or take action. They blame the persecutor. And, and they often seek validation. Like they, they will go to somebody and say, uh, you, you know, you understand this, you get this, right? Uh, and they go to somebody for more than just that validation, but they go to the third drama, which is called the rescuer. The rescuer is essentially a savior. They provide support when they don't really want to, but they feel guilty or anxious uh, when they don't. Um, rescuing gives the rescuer a sense of their own ability and capability and they may save the victim from this scenario, but not the mission at large. Now, a few things to think about here is this. The persecutor does not have to be a person. It can be circumstances. You see this with sales reps. No offense, sales reps. I love you, but you see it with sales reps all the time where they will be a victim of not a person, but circumstances such as, oh, you know, um, this is what's going on with the competition um, or the, the product uh, isn't in the spot where it needs to be, um, et cetera. Or they, they seek bl to blame somebody who isn't actually persecuting them. I'm not getting what I need from marketing in terms of leads, et cetera. Um, just using this as one scenario. But the, the persecutor does not need to be an active bully or a person. A victim can play the role uh, and and position circumstances as a persecutor. And that's why this victim role is so crucial. If somebody doesn't play this victim role, the rest of it tends to fall apart and the, the conflict doesn't exist. So we'll, we'll circle back to that. The second thing to think of is um, outside of the persecutor, not having to be a individual person um, or uh, active bully, but, a, but can be circumstances. The second thing to think of is we play these three different roles in different times. We play them differently in our home life versus our professional life and even our professional life, depending on the circumstances. We may go from rescuer to victim to persecutor all within a day or even an hour in some cases. So this shifts depending on the circumstances. So the question is, if you know you're playing one of these roles and the goal is to move into a more productive role, what are those roles? And they are these. Instead of the persecutor, what you have is 
the challenger. The challenger gets what they need by creating clarity and structure for the person that they need something from. They set expectations. They explain the value of what it is that needs to be done. They express their feelings. You'll hear them say things like, I'm, con I'm concerned that X, Y, and Z. Um, they model ownership, but they set boundaries. So they'll say, I can do this, but I can't do that. I need you to do this. And so instead of being a persecutor where they're bullying, they're using tact and finesse to, to get what they need. Now, the second role is moving from victim to a creator. The creator has, uh, instead of hopelessness, a sort of sense of self-assurance. I can figure this out. Uh, there must be a way, is the optimistic perspective that they have. And they use equal parts creative thinking uh, uh, and resourcefulness. So there's the creative thinking of how might I do X and Y and Z, and the resourcefulness of where has this been achieved before? There must be some place that I can, I can get a solution here. Lastly, instead of a rescuer, uh, you have the coach. So the coach is still there for the creator and the creator still can go to the coach, but they provide more support than saving. They provide encouragement. Uh, they ask powerful questions like what's, what's most challenging for you in this? Uh, they provoke creative thinking. So how might you do this? Uh, and they reaffirm ownership. This is important for you because, uh, and this is how they can turn a victim into a creator. So the, the real dynamic here in conflict is, uh, usually begins when somebody either chooses to play the, vic the, role, well, the role of a victim or uh, becomes a persecutor. The job that all of us has is to understand when we're playing one of these roles, and to shift over into one of the more productive modes of operating. It's, uh, that's it. It's called the drama triangle. It's incredibly powerful. Um, I could unpack this more, but let's say, what does this do for you? First, having an awareness of these roles that we play itself is key to breaking the cycle. Uh, if we don't understand that we're playing these roles and they're so straightforward. I mean, this is very commonsensical. You can see how each of us falls into these roles throughout our day. Uh, but now that you have got a, a name for it, an awareness, you can break the cycle. So that's the first thing. The second thing that I would do, so keep it top of mind. The second thing I would do is to introduce this framework to your team create a, a sense of this awareness that you will now have, but at a larger scale. And it also creates a common language and even brings some levity to the situation. Let me give you an example. So the first time I took this to a team, and this happened in many teams, once we had the language around persecutor or victim or et cetera, uh, rescuer, we began to be able to sort of name it and tame it. And there could be discussions and I would have somebody say, look, I'm not trying to persecute you here and to sort of preempt the language or stop persecuting me or, hey, I don't want to rescue from this situation. Let me help you. Let me coach you through this. And in the moment when things are very heightened, somebody going like, stop persecuting me could be it could bring some levity to a scenario. And that name it and tame it is a way to really kind of get everybody on the same page. And to do that, you need a common language. So simply introducing this to your team is incredibly powerful. The the third thing is to not focus on the conflict, but focus on the empowerment, right? So this framework gives you a choice, right? That's the key here. This isn't just about conflict, but empowerment. In conflict, rescuers will say, I, I have to do this. If I don't get involved, uh, this, this is not going to happen, this thing. The victim can't do this. Or the victim will say, I've got no choice here. The persecutor will say, this is the only way I can get what I want. It's not the case. There is choice in conflict. And that's the thing that people fear about conflict when they're conflict avoidant is that it feels like it's something that they don't have agency in. So focus on the empowerment that we do have choice. And that at core, if you think of one thing, think of creator, because 
all of these roles in some ways is a creator, right? The, the creator obviously must own and be empowered to own their circumstances. Uh, the circumstances and people are what they are. And to just think creatively and critically about solutions and then turn those solutions into realities. The coach is empowered to maintain their boundaries uh, and to create the development and the growth of others by allowing others to rise to the occasion and by helping them get there from afar through those boundaries. The challenger is empowered. They need to own being tactful and using finesse to express what's needed and to create ways to motivate others. And so thirdly, focus less on the conflict and more on ownership and empowerment and choice and the creating that is involved uh, in each of these roles. So the concept is easy. Putting into practice is where the wheels can tend to come off. Uh, for instance, if you're a habitual persecutor, you've got sharp elbows, how exactly do you get out of that mode? Knowledge is one thing, we're talking about behavior change. If you wanna create this change from, from drama to uh, empowerment and ownership, and you would like help facilitating it for yourself or personally, uh, for your team, give me a shout. I love, love, love helping teams move from uh, conflict avoidance and toxic conflict to teams that legitimately welcome and enjoy productive conflict because they see all the benefits that uh, productive conflict can bring to a team and to an organization and a relationship. So again, if you want help becoming more mature and effective in your navigation of conflict, give me a shout. I hope this was helpful. If it was, give it a like, share it with somebody that you think would find it helpful. Uh, and until our paths cross again, I wish you the best in your dedication to becoming the most effective executive that you can possibly be.